Hi, I'm Mike Wilkins, the pastor of the Manly Memorial Baptist Church in Lexington, Virginia. As you may know, today is Good Friday. And I have to be honest with you, because of the pandemic, this Good Friday feels different for me from others I have experienced. And the same may be true for you too. You may be worried about your health or the health of a loved one today, or you may be worried about your job or your business. Maybe you're worried about your education or the education of your children. You may be worried about how long you can keep this up, whether it's the isolation or the effort to balance everything and just keep everyone happy. You may be grieving today, grieving the loss of a loved one, the loss of employment or income or opportunities, or even the long held dreams and plans. Add to all of this the increasing number of people who are infected by the virus and the number of people who have died from the virus, and it all takes its toll on us. These are really tough times. And here we are at a day called Good Friday, and you may find yourself wondering where all the good is. I understand. But despite everything terrible and tragic that is going on in our world, this is still Good Friday. Good Friday is when we remember the day Jesus was crucified. And I want us to spend some time thinking about the good that Jesus accomplished that day. Now, obviously, I don't have time to cover everything that happened. But in these moments together, I'll share some words from the Bible, invite you to listen to some songs, and share at least one reason why I think that this day is good. On that first Good Friday, the Bible says, Jesus was sentenced to death by crucifixion by the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. He was whipped, beaten, and tortured by the soldiers and forced to carry his cross through the streets of Jerusalem out to the site of his execution, a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they nailed him to the cross the soldiers divided up his clothes by casting lots, and above his head they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Listen as Jen Spears sings, Via Della Rosa, accompanied by Allison Raymond. <laughs> that day the soldiers tried to clear the narrow streets but the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary he was bleeding from a beating there were stripes upon his back and he wore a crown of thorns upon his head and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death down the via dolorosa called the way of suffering like a lamb came the messiah christ the king but he chose to walk that road out of his love for you and me. Down the Via Dolorosa, all the way to Calvary. Por la Via Dolorosa, triste día en Jerusalem. Los orados le abrían paso a Jesús, mas la gente se acercaba para ver a que llevaba aquella cruz. Por la vía de la rosa, que es la vía del dolor, como vea vino Cristo, rey Señor. Y fue el quien que 
The Bible goes on to record that two robbers were crucified with Jesus, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, saying, come down from the cross if you're really the Son of God. In the same way, the religious leaders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself, and he calls himself the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we'll believe him. One of the robbers who was being crucified with him also heaped insults on Jesus. But the other one said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him saying, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. From noon until 3 p.m. darkness came over all the land. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In his final moments, Jesus looked out at those responsible for his death and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not understand what they are doing. Then Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and breathed his last. Listen as Lucy Wilkins sings, Were You There? Again, accompanied by Allison Raymond.
That phrase, it is finished, can be interpreted in many ways. When the religious leaders heard Jesus say those words, they believed it meant that they had won. There would be no more of his penetrating questions and disturbing teachings, no more challenges to their status. When the Roman soldiers heard Jesus say those words, it meant that a man who had to be watched lest he cause an uprising of the people against their authority was finally dead and they could relax. The only one of them dared to show his face at the cross. When the disciples heard those words, it meant that their dream of Jesus leading them to freedom from Rome's tyranny was over. And gone also was the joy of a special friendship, unlike any other they had ever known. When his mother Mary heard those words as she stood by the cross weeping, it was as if a sword had pierced her heart. This was her son, and his life was now finished much too soon. But though everyone gathered at the cross that day understood those words to mean that Jesus was finished, thank God he was not. For Jesus didn't say, I am finished. Instead, he said, it is finished. And there's a huge difference in those two statements. The New Testament was originally written in the Greek language, and in the Greek, that statement, it is finished, is one singular word. That word is the same word a runner would cry when he won a race or a boxer would roar when he knocked out his opponent. It was a shout of victory. When Jesus said, it is finished, he was declaring that he had faced our worst and achieved God's best. What is that best? The Bible says, God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son, so that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never really die. Jesus' death on the cross revealed God's love for all of us, for everyone. That means that no one, including none of us, is outside of God's love, and that is good news. It means that we don't have to try and earn God's love. We don't have to try and make ourselves better, more presentable morally and ethically so that in some way God will choose to love us. As Philip Yancey put it, there is nothing that we can do to make God love us more and there is nothing we can do to make God love us less. Good Friday is good because it reveals the depth of God's love for us and the lengths that he will go in order for us to be reconnected to him. Brennan Manning used to like to tell the story about how he got his name. He said that while growing up, his best friend was Ray. The two of them did everything together. They bought a car together as teenagers. They double dated together. They went to school together and so forth. They even enlisted in the army together, went to boot camp together fought on the front lines together. One night while sitting in a foxhole, Brennan and Ray were reminiscing about the old days in Brooklyn. Suddenly a live grenade came into the foxhole. Ray looked over at Brennan, then threw himself on the live grenade. It exploded, killing Ray, but Brennan's life was spared. Much later, when Brennan became a priest, he was told to take the name of a saint. He thought of his name, of his friend, Ray Brennan. So he took the name Brennan. Years later, he went to visit Ray's mother back in Brooklyn. One night, Brennan asked her, Do you think Ray really loved me? Mrs. Brennan got off that couch, shook her finger in front of Brennan's face, and shouted, What more could he have done for you to prove his love? Brennan said that at that moment he experienced an epiphany. He imagined himself standing before the cross of Jesus wondering, does God really love me? And Jesus' mother Mary, pointing to her son saying, what more could he have done for you to prove his love? Sometimes 
because of the hardships and heartaches of this life, we find ourselves wondering, does God really love me? Does God really care about me? In the cross of Jesus, God answers our questions with a resounding yes. I love you. No obstacle, no opposition, no challenge, no crisis could prevent Jesus from revealing God's incredible love for us on the cross. And that's why this Friday is called Good. Watch this video. Crisis cannot stop the cross. When the future is uncertain, we do not lean on our own understanding. For He is our ever-present help in times of trouble. Though the earth may tremble and the mountains fall into the sea, we do not fear, because He is the rock of our salvation. And when crisis knocks at our door and the things of earth are like dust in the wind, we stand firm, believing in the promise that we rest safely in His hands. For this is why He came, why He lived, and why He died, that we might have life and have it more abundantly, and take comfort in the knowledge that He is our King. Because we know that when all seemed lost and death thought it had won, crisis could not stop the cross. Thanks for watching today. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.